In this video, I'll show you how to use a joystick, just like you would find on a video game controller, as an input to an Arduino. This can enable you to do all sorts of cool things, like controlling a robotic arm. Let's start by taking a closer look at the joystick. Now, there are many different types of joysticks that you can find that will be compatible with your Arduino. I happen to like this one because the pins are oriented such that it will sit flat on a breadboard. If you search online, you might find others where the pins are at 90 degrees, so it would sit in the breadboard like this. What you need really depends on your project and what you plan to build. While it might look kind of complicated and intimidating at first, this joystick is really just two potentiometers. So you see this is labeled two-axis joystick. That means it has two independent outputs. I can move the joystick up and down, left and right, but I can also roll it around and move it diagonally. But what's inside this housing here is just two potentiometers. So if you have watched our previous videos in our How to Use an Arduino series, which you can find linked in the description of this video, you know that a potentiometer is just a variable resistor with three pins. And when you connect this to the Arduino and turn the knob, the voltage on this middle pin will change, and you can use that to get a continuous signal using the analog inputs and the analog read function on your Arduino. So we're going to set this joystick up, and it's really just like using two potentiometers, except we have them in one physical device. So we're going to connect the up-down signal and the left-right signal to our Arduino, and then demonstrate how we can use the joystick to control things. Next up, let's take a look at the wiring on the breadboard and connecting to our Arduino. If you don't know how a breadboard works, we have a separate video about that linked in the description of this one. So we have 5 volts and ground from the Arduino connected to the breadboard's power and ground buses. And then I'm just looking at the labels for the pins on the joystick to see where I'm going to connect them. This one has separate positive voltage supplies for the left, right, and up, down potentiometers. So in theory, if you wanted to connect those to two different voltages, you could. But since we're just running this all off the Arduino's 5 volts, I have a jumper wire going to the left, right positive jumper wire connecting over here to the other power bus, and then another jumper wire connecting to the up-down positive, so they are both at 5 volts. I also have two ground pins down here at the bottom. I tested with a multimeter, and these ground pins are actually connected internally, so while technically you don't need to connect both of them since they're connected, I've just put in a jumper wire here on each side for a little redundancy. Finally, we have our output signals, one labeled LR for left-right, one labeled UD for up-down, and those are available on both sides of the joystick, so depending on what you're physically building and where you want the wires, you can pick a side. There's no need to connect to both of them. I am just going to take a jumper wire for the left-right output, and I'm going to connect that to Arduino analog pin A0. Then I'm going to take one for the up-down output and connect that to Arduino analog pin A1. Then we are going to go take a look at the computer and write some code to get the reading from this joystick. Let's take a look at the relatively simple code I'm going to use to read the values from the joystick and print them out to the serial monitor. First, I define which pins I'm going to use and define variables for the left, right, and up, down values. In the setup function, all I need to do is initialize serial communication. And then in the loop function, I use the analog read command to read the two analog pins followed by the serial print command to print out the values. So if I upload the code and then open the serial monitor, we should see the values from the joystick printing out. So here we see I have my left, right, and up, down values. Now in theory, these should go between 0 and 1023 and be centered exactly halfway in between when I'm not touching the joystick. So right now I'm not touching it, and you see that these values aren't identical, so maybe the joystick is a little offset or doesn't have a perfectly halfway neutral position. Then when I move the joystick around, ideally we would see these numbers go all the way between 0 and 1023, but we have things like contact resistance in the breadboard or maybe a little bit of voltage drop from the Arduino's 5 volt supply. So as I move the joystick around, for example, right now I'm moving it all the way down, and you see that this number is bouncing around maybe around 9 or 10, but it's not getting all the way down to 0. Similarly, if I push it all the way up, it's getting up around 1,010, 1,009, but not getting all the way to 1023. And we'll see the same thing if I move it left and right. I'm not getting all the way down to zero there or, or all the way up to 1023 here, but I have a pretty good range. And you can see if I move the joystick around in a circle, both of these numbers are going to change at the same time. 
Of course, once you know how to get readings from your joystick, you'll want to use it to do something interesting. For example, here I have it programmed to control the brightness of these four LEDs. When I push the joystick down, which is to the left in this video since I have it rotated 90 degrees, it lights up the blue LED. When I push it up, it lights up the red LED. When I move it left and right, it controls the yellow and green LEDs. And as you can see, when I move it diagonally, it can light up two of the LEDs at the same time. The brightness of the LED is proportional to how far I push the joystick in the given direction. As I mentioned when we were looking at the code, sometimes the joystick does not rest exactly in its neutral position. You can see that one of the LEDs might get stuck just a little bit on. For example, after I move the joystick to one side and then let go, you see there the yellow LED doesn't turn off all the way, but if I bump it again, I can get it back to center and the yellow LED turns off. That is something you can account for in the code by giving your joystick a dead zone in the middle where you will ignore the input. You might want that, for example, if you are controlling motors. For example, if you were using this to drive a robot or steer the robotic arm we saw earlier, you wouldn't want your motors to constantly drift a little bit if the joystick isn't perfectly centered. So that's not a huge deal with the LEDs here, but it would be really annoying, for example, if your robot was constantly turning off to one side because the joystick wasn't right in the middle. So we'll show you how to deal with that in the code later. For now, let's switch over to the computer and look at how we can control these LEDs. Here we have the modified code where I still have my variables for the joystick, but I've added some new variables. So I have new variables for that neutral or center reading, which I'm going to use to calibrate my joystick. And I have a bunch of variables for the LEDs. So I have one pin for each LED, and then I'm going to have a brightness variable for each LED. In my setup function, I am now taking those neutral readings. So this will work assuming you are not touching the joystick right when the program starts. Here, I am just taking one reading and setting that to my neutral. But for example, if you think there's going to be a little bit of noise, you could take 10 readings in a row and average them to get your neutral value. But I'm keeping this simple for now. Then in my loop function, I am still using the analog read command to read the two values from the joystick. And my code here, now instead of just printing those values out, I have some if else statements to use them to determine which LED should be on and what their brightness is. Let's take a look at the code I'm using to do this. So I have the same beginning of my program here where I'm declaring variables for the joystick, but then I have two new variables for that neutral setting when I'm not touching the joystick that I will use for calibration. I then have a bunch of new variables for the LEDs declaring their pins and variables for their brightness. In the setup function, I now read the neutral value. This assumes you're not touching the joystick when the program starts. I just take one reading here, but if there's a little bit of noise, in theory, you could take a bunch of readings in a row and average them to get a better calibration. I am just keeping this simple for now. Then in our loop function, we again use the analog read function to read the value from each potentiometer in the joystick. Then we have a bunch of if statements that are going to control the brightness of the LEDs, which we will then control using the analog write command. Let's take a look at these if statements in a little more detail. Here I have if up down is greater than or equal to up down neutral. So I have pushed the joystick up. In that case, I want my blue LED to be off. So I'm going to set the analog write value to zero. And I'm going to use the Arduino map function to map my joystick value from the range of the neutral value to 1023 to a range of 0 to 255, which is what's accepted by the analog write command. Else means I have pushed the joystick down, in which case I'm going to turn my red LED off and again use the map function to map the value for the blue LED from the joystick value to a range of 0 to 255. I then do the same thing with a separate if else statement for the left right joystick value where I am controlling the yellow and green LEDs. The result is then that I have four analog write commands, one for the brightness of each LED, and as you saw, as I push the joystick or rotate it around, the brightness of the LEDs will change. Finally, we had talked about adding that dead zone, so you have a little wiggle room where your joystick input will not do anything to avoid drift, especially if you are controlling motors. So I have defined another variable for that, and then changed the logic of my if statement a little bit. So I'm no longer just checking 
if the joystick value is greater than the neutral value. I'm checking if it's greater than the neutral value plus that dead zone. So for example, if my neutral value is 500, before the joystick would turn the LED on if the value became just over or equal to 500. Now that won't happen until it's equal to or greater than 510. And then I have changed the rest of my statement to an else if statement to check if it is less than or equal to the neutral value minus the dead zone. So in this case, that would be 490. So if I'm in between 491 and 509, then I would just go to the final part of this else, else statement and I'll just set both LEDs to zero. So again, that's giving you a bit of a dead band in the middle and some wiggle room so you won't have drift from your joystick. And I've done the same thing for the left right value here. If for some reason you wanted to have different size dead zones for the left right and up down values, you could call these two different variables and then you could have different side, size dead zones for the two directions. If we switch back over to the camera here and see this running, you see now when I let go of the joystick, and it bounces back to the middle, the LEDs will stay off, even though physically it is probably not perfectly centered. That dead zone gives me a little bit of wiggle room here, so I need to push just a little bit farther before the LEDs will start to turn on. And then again, if I was controlling motors, I would not have to worry about drift when I let go of the joystick. You can use your joystick to control many other types of outputs. For example, as you saw at the beginning of the video, you can use one to control a robotic arm. We have a separate video about that linked in the description of this one. Make sure you check out the rest of our Arduino tutorial series, our list of cool science projects you can do with an Arduino, and many other science fair resources available at our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.